Hi, Dave Prouse here. I wanted to briefly talk about TCP IP loopback addresses. I get questions about these sometimes on my website, so I figured I'd make a quick video about them. Let's uh, fade out these drums and begin. Okay, so the loopback address is an IP address that specifies the local computer. And what I mean by that is the computer that you're currently sitting at, the one that you're currently working on. For example, the IP version 4 loopback address is 127.0.0.1. It is the computer. In IP version 6, it's double colon 1. The loopback address is a component of every computer. It relates directly to the local host host name, meaning this computer, the one that you're sitting at. Now, there are several reasons to utilize the loopback address. For example, the loopback address can be used for testing purposes. By pinging the loopback, you can discern whether the TCP IP protocol is working properly without connecting to another computer on the network and without generating network traffic. So let's show an example of this now on a Windows 7 computer within the command prompt. Okay, we're in the command prompt here now, and the easiest example is to use the ping command and that address we mentioned before, 127.0.0.1. When we press enter, we get four replies from the 127.0.0.1 IP address. That is us. That's our computer. That is the testing IP address. However, you can use any IP address on that class A 127 network. For example, we could do a ping space uh, 127 dot really anything as long as it's within uh, 1 and 255. It could be ping 127.55.36.199 and you'll get replies from that address. It's not just 127.0.0.1 that acts as the testing address. It's the entire network of 127. Now we can also test the loopback address from a IP version 6 standpoint. And we do that with the ping space colon colon 1. And we press enter and we'll get replies for that. That is the IP version 6 local loopback. You could also do ping localhost. That will then come up with the name of the computer, in this case, music box, and it'll by default reply from colon colon one. So we know that's an IP version six reply. We could do that command in an IP version four manner by adding the dash four parameter on the end, and we'll get 127.0.0.1. Localhost is uh, more of a Microsoft name that you can use, but it's basically this computer However, this does create network traffic because there's some resolution involved with the name of the computer, in this case, Music Box. So if you don't want to create any network traffic and you don't want any name resolution, then you should do it by IP address. And by the way, uh, another name you can use is Ping Loopback. And that essentially works the same as localhost, and you could use this on Linux systems and other similar systems as well. Now, pinging the loopback address is a good way to make sure the network adapter and TCP IP are functioning properly, even if the computer cannot access any other systems on the network. It can help to rule out many problems internal to the local computer. Another reason the loopback address is used is to lessen the load on network resources. For example, let's say you were hosting information via an HTTP or an FTP on your local machine, and you were doing this for several users or more on your network. Those users would connect in the usual manner to the server, whether they're doing it with a browser or a third-party application, However, you could connect to the server via the local loopback IP address, and that would reduce the network load. Because the IP address is local, any requests made to it by the local machine will stay local, and they don't travel onto the network. 
So this is an efficient way for an administrator to connect to those resources because the administrator will often send and receive a lot of data. The loopback address will populate the local routing table of the computer with an entry. This way, packets that are being sent to the 127.0.0.1 IP address will be routed internally to that network, quote unquote. In fact, this applies to the entire 127.0.0.1 slash 8 block. So any address on the 127.0.0.0 network applies. This is why the 127 network is excluded from the usable IP version 4 class A range of 1 to 128. Let's show an example of this real quick. Uh, first, we'll go into the browser. And I've got uh, my Chrome browser here at my website, devpros.com. We'll back that out. And we'll go to 127.0.0.1 and press Enter. That brings up the home screen for IIS 7, Internet Information Services. That's the built-in web server program within Windows 7. Of course, you have to install it and enable it to get it to work, but that's the web server that's running on this local machine. So if we go and use the browser to connect to it with 127.0.0.1, it'll just connect to that local website without creating any network traffic. And you could do this with FTP, you could do it with really anything. You can connect to any server with that, excuse me, any uh, server software running on the local machine with that local loopback address. And move data and do what you need to do, administrative or maintenance-wise, without creating that network traffic. And uh, that could be a real good thing for a lot of networks because sometimes the data you might be moving could be huge. It could be video files, audio files, uh, what have you. We mentioned the routing table, the local routing table of the computer. 127.0.0.1 uh, .0 actually puts an entry into the routing table. And to see this, we go into the command prompt once again and do a route print. Okay, when we do that, we get a lot of information. I just scrolled back up. And if we look here, we'll see the entire 127.0.0.0 network subnet mask 255.0.0.0. And the main interface that's being used for that is the local loopback address, 127.0.0.1. And here's the individual entry for that. So that's something that's allowing you to quote unquote route information internally. My regular IP address is on the 10.254.254 network, but that local loopback is on 127. So you can see from this route table that we do have an entry and that we can send information back and forth through that IP address. And that's, again, one way to uh, lessen the uh, load on network resources by really doing things locally, if at all possible. But again, the best way to do this is to connect by IP address, not by name, so that you won't create any of that network traffic. So let's wrap it up. In this video, I talked about the loopback address, which for IP version 4 is 127.0.0.1, and for IP version 6 is colon colon 1, or double colon 1. A couple of the purposes for the loopback include usage for testing purposes and to initiate sessions to locally stored resources, thus lessening the load on the network. So this is good stuff for you A plus and network plus people to know. And uh, really, you should know about the local loopback just for testing purposes if you're doing any type of technical work. So go ahead and try and practice this on your system now. Uh, for this video, I was using a Windows 7 Ultimate Edition computer and uh, just working in the basic command prompt and just any browser will do. So go and test that on, there, on your own. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at uh, www.davidlprouse.com.